Verses 51 to 60 of Gitanjoli. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patty Cunningham. Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore. Translated by the original author. Verses 51 to 60. 51. The night darkened. Our day's works had been done. We thought that the last guest had arrived for the night, and the doors in the village were all shut. Only some said the king was to come. We laughed and said, No, it cannot be. It seemed there were knocks at the door, and we said it was nothing but the wind. We put out the lamps and lay down to sleep. Only some said, It is the messenger. We laughed and said, No, it must be the wind. There came a sound in the dead of the night. We sleepily thought it was the distant thunder. The earth shook, the walls rocked, and it troubled us in our sleep. Only some said it was the sound of wheels. We said in a drowsy murmur, No, it must be the rumbling of clouds. The night was dark when the drum sounded. The voice came, Wake up! delay not. We pressed our hands on our hearts and shuddered with fear. Some said, Lo, there is the king's flag. We stood up on our feet and cried, There is no time for delay. The king has come. But where are lights? Where are wreaths? Where is the throne to seat him? Oh, shame! Oh, utter shame! Where is the hall, the decorations? Someone has said, Vain is this cry. Greet him with empty hands. Lead him into thy rooms all bare. Open the doors. Let the conch shells be sounded. In the depth of the night has come the king of our dark, dreary house. The thunder roars in the sky. The darkness shudders with lightning. Bring out thy tattered piece of mat and spread it in the courtyard. With the storm has come of a sudden our king of the fearful night. 52. I thought I should ask of thee, but I dared not, the rose wreath thou hadst on thy neck. Thus I waited for the morning when thou didst depart to find a few fragments on the bed. And like a beggar I searched in the dawn only for a stray petal or two. Ah, me! What is it I find? What token left of thy love? It is no flower, no spices, no vase of perfumed water. It is thy mighty sword, flashing as a flame, heavy as a bolt of thunder. The young light of morning comes through the window and spreads itself upon thy bed. The morning bird twitters and asks, Woman, what hast thou got? No, it is no flower, nor spices, nor vase of perfumed water. It is thy dreadful sword. I sit and muse and wonder, What gift is this of thine? I can find no place to hide it. I am ashamed to wear it, frail as I am, and it hurts me when I press it to my bosom. Yet shall I bear in my heart this honor of the burden of pain, this gift of thine. From now there shall be no fear left for me in this world, and thou shalt be victorious in all my strife. Thou hast left death for my companion, and I shall crown him with my life. Thy sword is with me to cut asunder my bonds, and there shall be no fear left for me in the world. From now I leave off all petty decorations. Lord of my heart, no more shall there be for me waiting and weeping in corners, no more coyness and sweetness of demeanor. Thou hast given me thy sword for adornment, no more doll's decorations for me. 53. Beautiful is thy wristlet, decked with stars, and cunningly wrought in myriad-colored jewels. But more beautiful to me thy sword, with its curve of lightning like the outspread wings of the divine bird of Vishnu, perfectly poised in the angry red light of the sunset. It quivers, like the one last response of life in ecstasy of pain, at the final stroke of death. It shines like the pure flame of being, burning up earthly sense with one fierce flash. Beautiful is thy wristlet, decked with starry gems, 
but thy sword, O Lord of Thunder, is wrought with utmost beauty, terrible to behold or think of. 54. I asked nothing from thee. I uttered not my name to thine ear. When thou tookst thy leave I stood silent. I was alone by the well where the shadow of the tree fell aslant, and the women had gone home with their brown earthen pitchers full to the brim. They called me and shouted, Come with us, the morning is wearing on to noon. But I languidly lingered a while lost in the midst of vague musings. I heard not thy steps as thou camest. Thine eyes were sad when they fell on me. Thy voice was tired as thou spokest low. Ah, I am a thirsty traveller. I started up from my daydreams, and poured water from my jar on thy joined palms. The leaves rustled overhead. The cuckoo sang from the unseen dark, and perfume of bubble flowers came from the bend of the road. I stood speechless with shame when my name thou didst ask. Indeed, what had I done for thee to keep me in remembrance? But the memory that I could give water to thee to allay thy thirst will cling to my heart and enfold it in sweetness. The morning hour is late. The bird sings in weary notes. Neem leaves rustle overhead, and I sit and think and think. 55. Languor is upon your heart, and the slumber is still on your eyes. Has not the word come to you that the flower is reigning in splendor among the thorns? Wake, oh, awaken! Let not the time pass in vain. At the end of the stony path, in the country of virgin solitude, my friend is sitting all alone. Deceive him not. Wake, oh, awaken! What if the sky pants and trembles with the heat of the midday sun? What if the burning sand spreads its mantle of thirst? Is there no joy in the deep of your heart? At every footfall of yours, will not the harp of the road break out in sweet music of pain? 56. Thus it is that thy joy in me is so full. Thus it is that thou hast come down to me. O thou Lord of all heavens, where would be thy love if I were not? Thou hast taken me as thy partner of all this wealth. In my heart is the endless play of thy delight. In my life thy will is ever taking shape. And for this, thou who art the king of kings, hast decked thyself in beauty to captivate my heart. And for this, thy love loses itself in the love of thy lover, and there art thou seen in the perfect union of two. 57. Light my light, the world-filling light, the eye-kissing light, heart-sweetening light. Ah, the light dances, my darling, at the center of my life. The light strikes, my darling, the chords of my love. The sky opens, the wind runs wild, laughter passes over the earth. The butterflies spread their sails on the sea of light. Lilies and jasmines surge up on the crest of the waves of light. The light is shattered into gold on every cloud, my darling, and it scatters gems in profusion. Mirth spreads from leaf to leaf, my darling, and gladness without measure. The heaven's river has drowned its banks, and the flood of joy is abroad. 58. Let all the strains of joy mingle in my last song, the joy that makes the earth flow over in the riotous excess of the grass, the joy that sets the twin brothers, life and death, dancing over the wide world, the joy that sweeps in with the tempest, shaking and waking all life with laughter, the joy that sits still with its tears on the open red lotus of pain, and the joy that throws everything it has upon the dust, and knows not a word. 59. Yes, I know, this is nothing but thy love, O beloved of my heart, this golden light that dances upon the leaves, these idle clouds sailing across the sky, this passing breeze leaving its coolness upon my forehead. 
The morning light has flooded my eyes. This is thy message to my heart. Thy face is bent from above. Thy eyes look down on my eyes, and my heart has touched thy feet. 60. On the seashore of endless worlds children meet. The infinite sky is motionless overhead, and the restless water is boisterous. On the seashore of endless worlds the children meet with shouts and dances. They build their houses with sand, and they play with empty shells. With withered leaves they weave their boats, and smilingly float them on the vast deep. Children have their play on the seashore of worlds. They know not how to swim. They know not how to cast nets. Pearl fishers dive for pearls. Merchants sail in their ships. While children gather pebbles and scatter them again, they seek not for hidden treasures. They know not how to cast nets. The sea surges up with laughter, and pale gleams the smile of the sea-beach. Death-dealing waves sing meaningless ballads to the children, even like a mother while rocking her baby's cradle. The sea plays with children, and pale gleams the smile of the sea-beach. On the seashore of endless worlds children meet. Tempest roams in the pathless sky. Ships get wrecked in the trackless water. Death is abroad, and children play. On the seashore of endless worlds is the great meeting of children. End of verses 51 to 60 Recording by Patty Cunningham